Hello and welcome back to Busy Man Reviews. In episode 21 of the final season of Attack on Titan, we finally got to see the story of the founder Ymir, who turned out to be a little girl who was a slave for the Eldian King Fritz. Throughout the episode, we never saw Ymir uttering a single word. The reason was implied rather than explicitly shown when we see Eldians cutting the tongues of the slaves once they capture them. Ironically, what sets her tragic story in action was something very trivial and absurd. She has just forgot to lock the pigs in and some of them escaped, that's all. And although it seems like a simple mistake, especially for a little girl, slavers are known to be ruthless and sadistic. And we see that when King Fritz asked the slaves to tell him who let the pig loose, they all pointed to Ymir, without uttering a single word either. Which could also be another clue that all slaves, including Ymir, got their tongues removed. Anyway, as a punishment, Ymir was hunted down for sport, as if she was some kind of an animal. And while she was running for her life, she hid inside a tree, where she fell into a chasm. And as she was drowning, we see her fusing with a mysterious creature before emerging from the tree as the founding titan. However, her titan form was nothing like how she was depicted in Eldian history books, as we see her titan is hideous and deformed, with a skull for a face and a ribcage that is sticking out of his chest. Surprisingly, all this power didn't change the slave mindset of Ymir, and she stayed a faithful servant for the king, who used her abilities to expand Eldia through paving roads, building bridges, and cultivating wasteland. The king also decided to have children with Ymir, and it is not out of love nor gratitude. I believe that King Fritz just wanted to ensure that the titan power will stay in Eldia forever. And so, Ymir gives King Fritz three daughters, Maria, Sheena, and Rose. As you may have noticed, that these are also the names of the three walls in Paradis. We also saw how Eldia and Marley were already enemies and how the power of the Titan completely tipped the scale towards Eldia for hundreds of years up until the Great Titan War when the 145th Eldian King Karl Fritz retreated to Paradis and vowed to renounce war. After Ymir crushed Marley, we saw the Marleyan troops surrendering to King Fritz. However, one Marleyan general dug out a spear that was hidden in the ground and threw it in an attempt to assassinate the king, but Ymir felt compelled to protect the king and used her body as a human shield. I chose the word compelled cause Ymir can't really escape the fact that she's a slave to the king. And so she figures that the only way out of this misery is by letting go and dying. And so, for the first time in her life, she chose not to use the power of the titan to heal herself and died. But Ymir didn't actually perish, but went into the coordinate, where she wandered for hundreds of years, still a slave to every descendant of the royal family. And as for her powers, well, the king forced his daughters to cannibalize their mother in order to inherit her powers, which became a tradition in the royal family for hundreds of years, up until Grisha stole the founder and passed him to Eren. We also saw Ymir making thousands of colossal titans. I think this was on the order of Karl Fritz, so he can build the three walls. We now know that Ymir makes titans inside the paths and takes her years to accomplish, but because time passes differently inside the paths, what what seems like an eternity is a mere second in our world. We then saw Eren setting Ymir free from her bond to serve the Fritz family by running towards her and shouting it ends now. I'll put an end to this world, lend me your strength. And that right there ties in with Eren's quest for freedom. Remember last episode when he told Zeke that when someone tries to steal my freedom, I will steal theirs. Exactly. It can also explain why Ymir saved Zeke after he detonated the Thunder Spear to kill Levi, so he can in turn save Eren and bring him into the paths to set her free. That right there is some mind-bending stuff, don't you think? Anyway, Zeke was of course freaked out by what Eren have just said because he finally realized what was Eren up to all this time, initiating the rumbling to wipe out all life outside the walls. And we saw Zeke desperately trying to regain control over Ymir. But as Grisha told him last episode, Eren had it his own way. This world may has been cruel to Eren, but has been a thousand times more cruel to Ymir. That's why she listened to Eren and lent him her powers to take revenge on mankind. And in one of the most epic moments in TV history, the walls crumble and the rumbling begins. We last see Eren sending a telepathic message to all Eldians, using the coordinate and making his intentions clear. He wants to turn the table on all humanity and exterminate them. This scene gave me goosebumps, the music, the walls coming down and the marching of the rumbling. 
and of course, Aaron's founding titan, which although is huge, is mostly made of bones, maybe because when he transformed, he was decapitated by none other than Gabby. This episode makes me wonder, was Aaron really free and planned to free Ymir from being a slave? Or did Ymir manipulate events until Aaron came and set her free so she can have her revenge against humanity? Especially that he said, you have been waiting here for 2000 years for someone to set you free. Feel free to share your opinions in the comment section down below. And as always, if you enjoyed watching this video and want to watch further busy man reviews, give us a like and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and see you soon with another video and another busy man review. Until next time.